Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Liz Lister, MD. Hello, Dr. Liz. Hi, good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Dr. Liz. It's always great to see you. And you are such a font of information. I have been hearing a lot about um, uh, international disparities in healthcare, the World Health Organization, yada, yada, yada. Yes. I, and of course, usually this is in the case of Africa, which is pretty darn poor, a lot of it, uh, but also other countries. But the question that came to my mind is, don't we have health and health care disparities here in the United States as well? We sure do. We sure do. So, so what kind of disparities do we have? I, I, I think of, you know, let's say, my mother used to say the starving children in Africa. Okay, well, they're poor, right. we're rich, comparatively speaking. So you can see that would be the obvious uh, disparity, but, or cause of the disparity. What right. causes right. it in the US? Yeah, exactly. To your point, there are quite a few different health disparities Race and ethnicity is one basis for health disparities, but there's also a lot of other possible basis uh, bases for health disparities. For example, gender, age, socioeconomic status, right? I mean, it's pretty clear that even across the United States, we're not uniformly rich. <laughs> there's right. a lot of differences uh, <clears throat> in status and even in geography. So there's parts in even in the United States, more rural versus urban, and all of these differences make quite a difference in health. So the the definition of health disparity, in order to keep it uh, kind of even keeled in terms of the definition, is differences that are systematic, that are either built into the system, that are avoidable, that we can fix, and that they are unjust. They're not fair. Mm. Okay, that's a whole discussion we could have another time. It's a very interesting discussion. What constitutes fairness? All right, but that's generally speaking what is used as the definition for health disparities. And there's quite a few. And I thought that what we could just take a look at initially is to talk about racial or ethnic health disparities. Sure, there's I, I, quite a I, few important I, ones to, to yeah. To that talk that about. would. Um... Because what we're talking about really is, forgive me if I'm wrong, but we're talking about the difference between not only health in, let's say, geography and economic status and all that, but health care. I mean, that's, that's right. a real big issue these days is, is getting right. the care to the people who need it the most. And if right. you were in one place in the country and that has a bigger health problem just because of the geography than another. Right then the right. care has to be distributed differently. Exactly, exactly. So the, so the, again, the definition is differences among groups in their ability to attain their full health potential. Mm -hmm. That's really, really what we're talking about. And that, to your point, includes the incidence of different diseases and also the death, the mortality from these diseases. Okay, so for example, if a particular group is more affected by obesity. So for example, in the United States, at least among individuals who are age 19 and younger, so kids and teenagers, the highest incidence of obesity is among uh, Hispanics. And this is gonna have a disproportionate impact because there's gonna be a higher incidence of diabetes mm. related to the obesity. Sure. All right, and then, and, and of course we're seeing this in terms of the pandemic, but I think I'd rather wait until we have more clear data to talk about that. So some of the examples I have for us today are differences that we clearly know about that are fixable. Good, let's hear them. Different communities. Another one has to do with the impact on African-Americans on, on health. So for example, and I have a lot of theories about this actually, because uh, it's difficult. It's a it's a fraught history that we have uh, between white people, African Americans, and people of color in general. 
indigenous people, all right, all kinds of different backgrounds that have that are differently affected by health issues. So some of the data that we have, it also always comes down to how you ask the questions. So we can talk about that in a moment. But uh, another area that we are aware of that's a really important indicator of health is infant mortality. And infant mortality in the United States is higher among African-American than it is among whites. Also the impact of HIV and AIDS still is disproportionately higher uh, among African-Americans. The, there are other health differences uh, in what are called Hispanic. This is where it comes down to some difficulty in how the question is asked. Yeah. Okay? And I have seen this during some of the data in the pandemic, even the current data that's being collected. Here in the United States, we've got the federal level, but we also have 50 states that do it each their way. So for example, in some states uh, of the US, they ask the, race, the racial question is black, white, other, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Whereas other questionnaires are gonna be much more detailed. They're gonna ask Native American, and even among Native American and indigenous people, there are differences based on the location. For example, if a reservation is closer to an urban area, it may have better access to health. And it also may have more exposure to toxics. Interesting. Interesting. Exposures. This exactly. Is a, this is a very complicated subject. Yes. And it seems that the statistics, as much as I'm I'm not a big fan of statistics, but it seems like because it's such complicated, the statistics are really important to get a handle on this. Well, That's right. Also, I'd like, I'd like to say uh, uh, for a, a lot of people in our audience who might be watching this, um, that people who celebrate Act Two are white, black, Hispanic. Uh, I don't know what and, percentage. And three, I know you don't like statistics, but uh, I don't know how many uh, 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 indigenous American uh, tribes uh, watch us, but hopefully there'll be a large following uh, as well. But the, the important thing is that uh, no matter what group you're in, people are living longer, healthier lives. And uh, these disparities uh, may or may not uh, get exacerbated, but the really important thing, and um, uh, we just don't talk about uh, things that are upbeat all the time, uh, but we talk about the real world. And so I want to say to our audience, this is important because uh, not only, uh, let's say you are white, uh, and let's say you have in general better access to health care. Uh, the truth of the matter is that when certain people don't have health care uh, afforded to them in the same way, it winds up costing all of us in higher premiums and in federal support uh, of these things as well. So uh, maybe we could end up a little bit on an up note on the kind of things that, let's say, in the because you only want to really uh, emphasize the racial a disparity in healthcare today, but are there some things that are you think are easily fixable uh, that could be addressed right away without too much additional pain and suffering uh, uh, to the economic system? Oh my, easily fixable. That's a challenging question. <laughs> I did want to bring up one other piece to this, okay. which honestly, awareness of what I want to share with our audience could potentially be, I'm not sure if it's an easy fix. Let me share it with you and then we can talk about it. But awareness is definitely easy to raise in terms of people hearing a couple of, in, I was going to say interesting, but really unfortunate and alarming facts that we know. And this impacts these racial health disparities. And that is some of the myths that have been perpetrated, particularly on African-American people in the United States with our difficult history and background. And that is myths that still impact today as we speak, how healthcare is delivered to African-Americans. For example, myths including that, that black people's skin is thicker, that they feel less pain, this in, and that they have less lung capacity. This 
influences, these are studies and that were done by white doctors on slaves and on blacks even after slavery, even in the 1900s. A lot of the information is really, really alarming and shocking and, and appalling. However, I think once we talk about it and bring it out in the open, that we can start to address these differences. So for example, even as we speak, black women in the United States are given less pain medication during labor. And this is back to that incorrect myth that African-American people feel less pain. They, we are all the same. This is the, yeah. up, the, uh, the note that we can wrap up on is that our human bodies are almost exactly the same. And I only say almost because it's only the outside that may look different. Everything else is the same. Even the health disparities that the, have a racial ethnic background, in my view, come down to these kinds of mental differences, differences in the way healthcare is delivered and in the way that we ensure access for everybody in our country. Around the world, we're also realizing, but we can start at home and we can look at bringing it, making it a more level playing field so that everybody, as we said, can have the full opportunity to have their full health potential. I think that's a wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. goal. And I think that's the goal of most people in our country today. Um, healthcare is a big issue. And I, and I think that's the reason. But you know, I want to leave, I, I want to leave with one thought that I had, and that is you started out by mentioning all the variety of disparities, uh, age and uh, ethnicity mm -hmm. and uh, geography. And and I, what I took away was it, we are all individuals and we need to take care of ourselves. We need to know that maybe because I'm black or maybe because I'm Hispanic or maybe because I live in Appalachia or maybe that... I need more of something or less of something. In other words, we it's our obligation to know who we are and what we need, and I think demand it. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.